ever heard of a, a premise called a golden example? Do you know what a perfect example of something is? It's like where you discover something and you want to illustrate something about something. And it's like, oh my god, this is the most perfect example. Like museums have perfect examples of like mineral specimens. It's like, oh my god, I've seen a lot of these, but this is the perfect example of that thing. This is the perfect example of thinking deeply and thinking accurately mathematically and yet being totally stupid and 100% incorrect. This is called correct math but incorrect conclusions. This is where you're able to see all the details. It's like, I know it's every little bit. Did you, you can't see the big picture of anything. It's like, this is, a, this is a hardcore philosophy that you should have been taught in school but you never were. And this is about being 100% correct and at the same time 100% wrong. How could that be? You're 100% correct about the math about something, but you make an incorrect conclusion. This is such a really important point. And someone posted this comment to me, and it's so epically stupid, but it is so mathematically correct. This is the best example in any comment I've ever read out of God knows how many tens and tens of thousands of comments. It's like, wow, this is it. This is the one example that I've been looking for. Um, it's, it's really a, a, a study of the psychology and human stupidity. And look, we all make mistakes. Like, if someone asks me how to fix a car or something, I don't know anything about a car. Well, I know some things about cars, but, you know, it's just, it's wow. It's stunning. So I'm going to read not all of the comment because it'll bore the hell out of you because there's so much math in it. But I'm going to post it below, the comment below, and then, uh, you'll see it. Um, this is a person that is arguing that a larger sensor gathers more light, therefore it, uh, you know, has, uh, you know, it's different than a, a crop sensor. And, uh, well, they are different, but not for the reasons that are mentioned here. Okay, both cameras, uh, cameras are directed at the same spot on an evenly lit white wall backdrop that covers the field of view. Now, the full frame, 36 times 24 equals 864 millimeters square for the Nikon FX fans, obviously gathers more light because it has a larger sensor area. Yeah, see, cameras don't work off of larger total area. Exposure is per unit area. Okay, so that's a mistake. The math is correct, but is... But then he goes on to use that math to say, uh, obviously, it gathers more light because it has a larger set. See, one thing is the math, the truth, and the other thing is a BS conclusion, which uses the math to support a BS conclusion. And this isn't the entirety of the, the, the comment. I'm going to post the rest of it here in the second. It's just like, wow, this is perfection. You have 100% accurate math, and then over here, you use that math to make a 100% BS, incorrect, stupid, dumb, asinine, absurd, illogical, incorrect statement. <sighs> Whereas the crop sensor on the Nikon APS-C, for example, is DX equals 36 millimeter over uh, 1.5 times 24 millimeter over 1.5 equals 864 millimeter squared over 1.5 squared equals 864 millimeter squared over 2.25 equals 340 millimeter squared. Where Canon APS-C is 36 millimeter over 1.6 times 24 millimeter what's up to 864 blah, 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 blah. Imagine for the sake... You could read the whole comment below. Imagine for that sake a single camera with a crop sensor. Okay, mm-hmm. With a crop sensor, it gathers a certain amount of light. Now we extend it with the full frame around it that makes up the difference to the full frame sensor. Of course, this new, bigger sensor gathers more of the light than around the previous smaller sensor, additionally. For a Canon, blah, blah, blah. More light gathered, and he uses a bunch more math. Nikon 1.52 squared times 2.25 equals 125%. Therefore, we have more light gathered over the full frame of the whole sensor. Correct math, incorrect conclusions. You have 100% fact, and you use that fact to uh, create a 100% lie. It is like, if I were to go outside and I were to find these gigantic footprints, and they're actually left by a dozer, a bulldozer, for example, you know, you could say somebody is saying like, well, this footprint has a certain profile, and it, and it proves that the, the, the creature that walked on this dirt was two tons. And given the, given the square area and ratio of this footprint, we must conclude that it is a prehistoric dinosaur that has escaped from the waters. It's like, no, no, asshole. That, that's a bulldozer, you know. That was like a three-ton bulldozer that was like rolling through the dirt there. It, total facts. 
used to build the foundation for a total lie. This is such an important point that you should have learned in school. We never learned any of this really important stuff in school or college. I mean, how important is this as I'm swirling around like a frigging lunatic? We have someone giving you the absolute hardcore mathematical proof, and then they use that proof as a concrete foundation to lay a total stinking, rancid, dirty, smelly, putrid, nasty, sloppy, you know, poopy pile of dirty freaking lies. Oh, wow. Hooray! This is like an epic point in human understanding. And we were never taught this stuff in school. Well, this guy's got all the facts, therefore he must be correct. No, he's got all the facts. He just drew an incorrect conclusion. This is exactly what Nikola Tesla meant by thinking deeply but being insane. Nikola, I can't remember Nikola Tesla's exact quote, and it's something to the fact that uh, you can be a deep thinker and think insanely. Just because you're a deep thinker doesn't mean that you're thinking clearly. Uh, I, I don't have Tesla's exact quote in front of me. I mean, you could find it easily on the web. You know, Nikola Tesla, yes, you're right. You see, this is what Nikola Tesla, you, sh you guys should have been taught some of the stuff Nikola Tesla said in the school. Uh, exposures per unit area. You know, by this idiot's conclusion, as I made a video humorously last week about, it's like if I step over from Connecticut, which is a big state, to Rhode Island, which is a tiny state, it's like I cross the border from Connecticut into Rhode Island, there's going to be a lot less light. No, it's the same. The light is per unit area, not over total volume. Connecticut is a lot larger. If I am standing in Connecticut and I stroll over into Rhode Island, and Rhode Island is a lot smaller, the math says that since Rhode Island is a lot smaller than Connecticut, therefore the exposure is totally different because the total square area of Connecticut is a lot larger than Rhode Island. Oh, that's true. But you see what happens when you cross over that border from Connecticut to Rhode Island? And nothing changes. Nothing. How'd you love how it twirled around in my chair like a lunatic? Because this stuff is stupid. But we also were not taught this stuff in school. As I showed you in a prior video, we got two buckets of rain here. There's 10 millimeters of rain here, and there's 10 millimeters of rain here. They're both put out in the rain at the same time. There's more total water here than there is here, but your camera doesn't work that way. It's 10 millimeters here and 10, 10, 10. On the smaller one, it's 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10, 10, 10, 10. You get that point? Your camera sensor does not work off of total volume. There is more water here, but your camera sensor doesn't work that way. It doesn't. Uh, does not. N-O-T. No. Wrong. No. Incorrect. Wrong. No. No. <sighs> Do you get me now? Do you feel me? And last point, please God understand this. It doesn't matter what camera it is on planet Earth or what lens it is on planet Earth that you got. No lens knows, cares, or does anything different when you put it on a full frame camera as opposed to a crop sensor camera. It doesn't do anything different. At the same aperture, when you stick this on a full frame versus a DX frame, what changes? Nothing! The only thing it changes is a crop. A crop is a crop is a crop is only ever a crop, and a crop is only a crop, and a crop is ever only a crop. The depth of field remains the same. The exposure remains the same. Apparent depth of field seems to change, but that is only because you took this image of projection and you cropped it down to this. And actually, all lenses create circular images, but, of course, our sensors crop them out in a rectangular fashion. Nothing changes. Exposure doesn't change. Depth of field doesn't change. Apparent depth of field changes. But the only reason the apparent depth of field changes is because the crop changed. You cropped into this instead of that. <sighs> yeah, get it. Got it. Good. This is a video that, like, children should watch, except for maybe the one or two times that I cussed in it. Because this is important, and you weren't taught this stuff in school. You should have been taught this stuff in school, but you never were. Thanks for watching. Bye.